If you were wondering if the GPT Duo supports Linux, I'm happy to report that it absolutely does. In fact, I've installed Bazite on here, which is kind of like the Linux distro flavor of the month. A lot of people are doing this because it is a very SteamOS-like Linux distro. So it's SteamOS without being SteamOS. And it does a lot of things that are really cool that a lot of other vanilla Linux distros don't do. Like this will do a lot of things for you for Mango, Mango HUD setup for you automatically to mimic what SteamOS does. So what they do there is they'll go ahead and prepackage LM sensors so all the sensors just automatically work. There's nothing that you have to set up. So all that stuff makes it far better just to get going and have metrics and other stuff for hardware insofar as a gaming sense if you want to have that up there. So Bazite is really cool. And it's not just the gaming mode. It can opt to automatically launch into this. You can have that choice when you're first installing it. Obviously, if you want to go into the desktop, I'm using KDE, and it can go to that just fine and support both of the monitors. You just have to go into the display configurator and make sure that you align the monitors how they should be. Now, everything does work. Sound, Wi-Fi, touchscreen, the displays, all of that's working just fine. The only problem is that the initial configuration is that the touchscreen on the bottom display will be one-to-one -one mapped to where you're touching on the panel itself. However, the top touchscreen when you're moving your hand or touching on any particular element, that'll translate to the bottom screen. So the only thing here is that obviously the touchscreen works on both of these panels. It just needs that the top touch panel that you're using must be configured to correspond to the top panel, which it doesn't right now. So that's a configuration prob problem. Obviously it does work as you can see right here. So that does work. Also, like I had mentioned in my previous review, all of the gestures on the touchpad work as well, because that is something that GPD just always does. They never opt to use a software solution to solve something. They look at it through uh, the lens of being a hardware feature. So it's typically operating system agnostic, meaning it's not going to be a Windows only thing, obviously. So when we go ahead and use the gestures from the left, right or the top, all of that just works in Linux as well. So you can adjust the brightness with the right sl uh, slider, the the volume on the left slider, and then you can you actually scroll left and right on the top gesture part. So all of that works. There's nothing that you need to install. That's just a feature of the touchpad itself and how that translates to Linux, and that just works. There is one caveat on something that doesn't work perfectly, and that is HDR. Even though HDR does work, it is not the best. It's kind of messed up. So it seems like whatever EDP or whatever is going on here that Linux is interpreting could use some sprucing up. There's a configuration that most likely needs to get tuned up a little bit because how it's being displayed is it's there's some garbage that is coming on the screen. It's not want to say artifact because that's going to be more from what like a GPU problem. That's not really the case. It looks like what's going on here is something from the display end and how it's, uh, you know, it's trying to sync with the monitor. And that is incorrect. So HDR does work, but it's not perfect. So that does need a tune up. But that honestly is the only thing that I found that didn't work immediately. Uh, so everything else just worked just fine. I didn't really have to do anything at all. I literally installed it and started running. In fact, I was able to do a bunch of game tests. And with all of the LM sensors, like I had talked about being already installed, I didn't have to do anything. I could just start capturing data and compare it to Windows. So we'll be able to compare Strixpoint AMD HX3070 compared from on Bazite to Windows. And it really shows you how bad Windows does on this new type of CPU that that AMD has here. And, and Windows really needs to do a lot better. It's not every game that is better for Bazite, but there are a, a lot of times when even when Windows is kind of neck and neck, on the 1 percentile and point 1 percentile, Bazite takes the lead. It's just a far more consistent spread on the lower end side. So that's a clear win for Bazite. We'll be going over those reviews in just a second. But that's pretty much everything that I think you'd want to know about if this works on Linux, and it does. So let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks real quick just so you can get a quick understanding of what you should anticipate if you were to go on Linux. And honestly, it's really good. The first game we'll be taking a look at is Batman Arkham Knight 720p with max settings and no NVIDIA game works. The difference that we're taking a look at here is Windows 24H2 versus Bazite Linux. All of these are stock settings, 7500 mega transfers. They're pretty much the exact same setup. Their only difference here is the operating system used. In this particular game that we're taking a look at, Batman Arkham Knight is a late generation uh, Unreal Engine 3 game, still running DirectX 11. So it's a really good game to run, generally speaking. At 10 watt, Windows is actually winning. On averages, we're about 4% better. On 1% tower, we're about 4% better 
a better on one percentile we're about four percent better and on 0.1 percentile linux actually leads about four percent so there's a little bit of difference at 0.1 percentile but overall still much better on windows same is true at 15 watt on windows we're about six percent better on averages two percent better on one percentile however linux is about two percent better on 0.1 percentile still a better showing for windows when we go to 20 watt again windows is winning about five percent better on averages six percent better on one percentile and here we're actually winning on 0.1 percentile as well about four percent better here so so far a clear win between 10 watt to 20 watt on windows it takes a little bit of a turn where linux actually gets better on averages we're about four percent better on averages on linux however we are still better on one percentile about two percent better and six percent better on 0.1 percentile ultimately how i look at this is i would still say clearly that windows is actually doing a better job with regards to batman arkham knight so windows is doing a better job inside the same power scope with the exact same settings for this particular game however when we take a look at this on the next game cyberpunk things drastically change the next game we'll be taking a look at is Cyberpunk 2077. We're running 720p, the Steam Deck preset with no upscaling. And in this one particular test, regardless of the wattage, Bazai Linux is just clearly winning here, despite, again, all of the settings being exactly the same between both Bazite or Windows 24 H2. At 10 watt, we're seeing that Bazite has a 17% performance increase on averages. On 1 percentile, 34%. On 0.1 percentile, 75%. That is gigantic inside of 10 watts. That is huge, just ginormous, a big, big difference between the two. When we go up to 15 watt, still more, it's kind of the same idea, right? 8% better on averages, 14% better on one percentile, 13% better on 0.1 percentile. At 20 watt, we're 8% better on averages, 13% better on one percentile, 19% better on 0.1 percentile. At 25 watt, 12% better on averages, 15% better on 1 percentile, 22%, 23% better on 0.1 percentile. This one particular game has always been a, a, st a sticking point. Cyberpunk does some uh, specific work. It does make use of more CPUs. And with this new HX3070, the new architecture that they have here on Zen 5, it's falling apart on Windows 24 H2. There are things that are clearly not good enough. When we had better performance on Batman Arkham Knight in the previous test, right? When we configure Windows to be EPP90, when we do all the things that we make it so that it runs in the best configuration possible, right? We're not trying to push all the power to CPU. We're not doing high performance mode, which would be absolutely silly to do. We're doing it so that it's the best case scenario for the system itself. When we do the same thing, Things are falling apart here, and this is one thing that highlights where Bazite is basically keeping up, or like 4% different less on Batman Arkham Knight, but we have 20% better on averages, 35% better on 1 percentile at low, low TDPs. This is something that is really huge, and I mean, at, just from this one example, this would be one reason that I would want to move over to, to Linux instead of being on Windows 24H2. Microsoft has a lot of work on their hands, and they need to fix this. The next game we'll be looking at is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, DirectX 11 with Ultra Settings. This game is, I love showing it just because it's a very late-gen DirectX 11 game. This is just before DirectX 12 was really starting to kick off even Vulkan or even Mantle. So this is one of the late-gen PC games that with no resolution scaling. It was just a very taxing game. If you try to run this on PC gaming handles at the time, it would just be absolutely brutal. Putting on Ultra Settings is even more taxing on the GPU, but I always love showing it off. Here we're taking a look at the difference that where Bazite is actually able to keep up and it's very interesting. So let's just go through it. At 10 watt, we can see that averages are effectively the same. However, there's a difference when we take a look at our one percentile. One percentile is about 11% better on Bazite and our 0.1 percentile is about 17% better. That consistency of frame rate at that low wattage is going to give you that better experience even though that we have effectively the same average FPS. If we go to 15 watt, we're going to see that it's a 6% better on Windows. It's actually a little bit less on averages on Bazite. However, we take a look at 1 percentile, it's effectively the same, but 0.1 percentile is 9% better on Bazite. It's just showing you that the 1 percentile, the lows, are actually clustered together in a much tighter pattern. This signifies to me how much better the CPU is able to just control things that going on. Having that tight spread right over here is a real good indication of what the operating system is doing. And it's really just an indicator of how bad Windows is doing. When we go up to 20 watt, again, averages are exactly the same, but things change when we go to one percentile. We're about 6% better on one percentile and 14% uh, better on 0.1 percentile. Again, a much tighter clustering of 1% and 0.1. Look how the difference 
of 1%, 0.1% on Windows. It kind of trails behind, quite far behind, but this is a far more consistent experience. Going up to 25 watt, we even see a bigger lead for, for Bazite. At averages, we're at 4%, nothing really big, but our 1%, uh, 1 percentile is 30% better, and our 0.1 percentile is 20% better for, wind, uh, for Linux Bazite. And that's at 25 watts. Same power scope, but a far better, more consistent experience. And this is, again, painting the picture that Bazite truly is just a more superior system, especially for the HX37 at the current moment with what Windows is doing. This next game that we're going to be taking a look at is Horizon Zero Dawn 720p Favorite Performance. This game is super interesting to take a look at between Windows 24 H2 versus Linux, only because on Windows side, AMD has done very, very good on this particular game, especially compared to like Intel iGPUs. It's almost like 2x better on AMD. So there's clearly something going on here, especially driver wise on Windows side, where it's really just doing a ton of work. However, RADV and what Linux is doing is able to, to win in some aspects. If we look at 10 watt, we can see that Linux Bazite is running about 7% on averages, 14% on one percentile, and 9% on 0.1 percentile. At 10 watt, that's just excellent results from Bazite getting that extra performance out of it. When we go to 15 watt, things are you know starting to even out for Windows. Our averages are effectively the same. However, our one percentile again is 11% better on Linux Bazite and 10% better on our 0.1 percentile for Bazite. So clearly it's still better overall. Like this is a much better result at 15 watt. At 20 watt, we can see that Bazite is once again, Windows and Bazite are kind of basically a little bit neck and neck in here. So if we take a look at our averages, effectively the same. Our one percentile, 3% better on uh, for Bazite, 2% uh, better for our 0.1 percentile. So Effectively at 20 watt, there really is no difference between Bazite and Windows. This is a pretty clean result when we take a look at these two, and they're both basically configured the same, right? Like I am doing my best case that I can for Windows insofar as EPP settings. We're doing EPP 90 in a balanced setting, but outside of that, I'm not doing anything outrageously crazy. When we take a look at 25 watt, Windows stays on top on averages, but barely anything. On one percentile, it's a little bit lower. Uh, uh, Bazite's about 2% better, and it's different on 0.1 percentile at 4%. So it's a real weird mix, but at very low TDPs, Bazite is clearly winning. And the last game that we'll be taking a look at is Returnal 720p FSR2 balance settings and the lowest settings possible. Now, this is FSR2 balance, so I am running a sub-resolution of 720p that is being upscaled to 720p. This game is fantastic to benchmark because it is such a demanding GPU test. It pushes the GPU very, very hard, and it kind of shows us, especially when we see a generational increase from a GPU and how much further we've we've gone. So the cool thing about this is because this game is not going to be so demanding on the CPU that we should really be just be able to see is Linux doing anything better on the GPU side with the Rad V drivers versus AMD's drivers. So if we take a look at 10 watt, we can see that averages are about 6% better. Our 1 percentile is about 20% better, and our 0.1 percentile is about 30% better. This is a fantastic showing inside of 10 watt, like outrageously great. When we go to 15 watt, things start to even out. At 15 watt, we're actually 4% better on Windows, and our 1 percentile is effectively the same 0.8% difference, nothing really to write home about. However, our 0.1 percentile is 13% better on Bazite. Arguably, Bazite is still better at 15 watt, and I would argue that at 15 watt, you could actually have actually good playable results when you have almost 26 FPS on our one percentile. That's a fairly good FPS for these particular settings that is completely playable all the time because the tests that I'm running here kind of encompass a lot of things and not just like looking at a wall. So this is actual playable stuff with a lot of stuff happening. So that is the worst case scenario of the type of frame rate that you're going to be getting in these benchmarks. When we go up to 20 watt, again, things balance out where Windows is looking a little bit better on averages. We're about 4% better on averages. Effectively the same on one percentile. However, again, our 0.1 percentile is 7% better on Bazite. I would still say that Bazite is still better here, but ultimately between Windows and Bazite, where it's not that big of a difference, where we're seeing that CPU difference really come into anything. When we take a look at 25 watt, again, Windows is on top, about 2% better on averages. We lose on one percentile, it's 4% better on uh, Bazite, and 12% better on 0.1 percentile. Definitely clear lead for Bazite here, but overall, not the gigantic difference that we're ultimately seeing. If anything, we're just taking a look at those 1 percentile and 0.1% where 
Linux is just doing a far better job just keeping things more consistent, just making the entire gameplay far more smooth. That's the end of our look at Linux game test on AMD Strix Point. Ultimately, it's still much better for Bazite except for Batman Arkham Knight. So there's probably still going to be games that Windows wins here. But this is a clear indicator that Microsoft really needs to fix things on Windows because whatever they're doing with this new CPU, they're doing a pretty bad job. So that will wrap it up on my look for the GPD Duo. It, this has been a really strenuous set of tests. This is going to be my third video and final video on it. And I'm actually glad because I'm going to wipe this machine now. And this is going to replace my main desktop. My GPD Win Max 2 is going to get shelved. Uh, it'll be doing double duty for something else. But this is going to be the unit that I use going forward. So I'm going to kind of have this connected to my, my 4090 and most likely my 5090 when I buy that when it comes out. So this is going to be my desktop replacement. I'll be going through Oculink out. I love this machine. I typically liked having the GPD Win Max just because I also consider it a handheld. And when I would go out, I would have everything already loaded on there. But I must admit, having HX 3070 run at 60 watt at no sweat, obviously it does get loud, but I can run at 40 watt and it's not really loud. I'm really looking forward to using this as my desktop replacement. If you were looking at using this for Linux, works great. Might need a little bit of tuning, but I don't think it's going to be outside of the scope of what you would anticipate having to do if you're a Linux user yourself. So that's it. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.